to ensure that what the present minutes have been around uh, the issue of drug addiction, especially for our people, the committee headed by the Ministry of Health have continuously met, and of recent, they have they will start on Monday, which is this coming Monday, they will start doing an assessment of all of the different areas that is responsible for hoarding, uh, issue of rehabilitation centers. They will map out all the rehabilitation centers that it is in the country. So to those of you who are working in those lines, who have been providing services for people who have found, who found themselves in um, ghettos, it will be important to reach out to the Ministry of Health uh, to be able to work together on that. Interestingly, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, um, as well as our international partners, we're all working on, on these same uh, areas. Also, the Ministry of Health team um, that is leading the efforts on the issue of drugs and alcohol addiction by young people, they will be working in consonance of one another because one of the things that the President has stressed for this administration is to ensure coordination between line agencies and ministries so that at the end of the day, everyone is contributing to a bigger portion of uh, the pie so that you can do your bit uh, and the rest of the other people do their part. Um, uh, finally, as you've heard, the Excellency the President has requested uh, the legislature for the allowance of for the usage of uh, at least $4.3 million so showing that the government doesn't shut down government runs, uh, and we're hoping that the legislature will expedite that process to continue to work in the interest of the Liberian people. So, so far, those are the key issues uh, I wanted to touch on today. Um, should you have questions around those subjects or, I mean, the generality of other issues, I mean, feel free to uh, engage us, and uh, we will have your questions answered. So again, thank you very much for coming, and I look forward to our continuous engagement with all of you. The voice of the Presidential Press Secretary, Madam. So we will have uh, Ellis from our mm -hmm. office to coordinate the questions and answer period. So you will call your name um, and your institution you represent and ask your question. Please make your peace, please succeed with your question. You allow your colleagues to ask as well. Thank you. Madam Kula for fun and day, and of course, Good afternoon, Madam Secretary. We'll begin. I report for King Sussman and Morris Test Compliance. Um, a day or two ago, uh, the social media in Liberia uh, went socially at work with uh, information that were provided on the website and both the Facebook pages of our executive mansion. I want you to clarify uh, the issue of the president meeting the Ghanaian leader uh, for a two-day working visit versus the president meeting the vice president of Ghana. Can you please clarify for the public? Thank you so much. Question number one there. And this is the regular press. Do you think executive mansion? Yeah. President Shop Press Secretary. My name is Anthony J. Pan for ABC Radio. Additionally to the question asked by Mr. Brown, the communication sent to the Liberian legislature said the president was going to Ghana for two weeks. The president spent a day. How can you address that? Thank you. Questions will continue, but uh, it's the regular. Hello, my name is Mark. My name is Mark McGonfer, and I report for the New Republic newspaper. Um, Madam Presidential Press Secretary, I want to know. Um, you said the team will be mapping up rehabilitation centers. What exactly are you? Are we expecting from them? What's the government planning? setting up more rehabilitation center because they fight against drugs need more rehabilitation center that's one two i read on a newspaper that um the eps is expected to reduce its force 
about 500 can get you as this. Questions will continue. Thank you so much, Madam PPS. My name is Sombon, and I report for Crown FM. And yesterday, we saw footages on the social media of His Excellency the President in conversation with her command of the armed forces of Liberia. We are yet to get any information surrounding our meeting. Two, how soon do we expect to see the new defense minister? Thank you. The presidential press secretary. Thank you, I'm Julius Conton. Be jotting down the notes. Portal television, the follow up to that question. Uh, one of the local dailies reported allegedly that uh, they retired and asked the defense minister was coerced to resign. I'd like to get clarity from the office of the president whether he was, he was coerced to resign. And to one of my questions, the deputy minister for the Ministry of State during a confirmation hearing told members of the national legislature that over 700 ghost names were discovered on the payroll here at the Ministry of State. I'd like to know which yardstick did she use and if can there be any provision for information to the public. And lastly, from my end, nominated government officials that have been confirmed and as per constitution should have been commissioned and now by the president, but they are currently working. Are there any reasons why? Thank you. Thank you very us. much. I will begin with the last question. You know, the constitution of the Republic of Liberia provides uh, the basis for which the presidency can, can do certain things. For example, on the issue of the role of the president, the president appoints or nominates the presidents, as I said earlier, uh, the Senate confirm and the President appoint. So that is the constitutional provision. On the issue of commissioning, it's just a ceremonial aspect. The fact that these people have been appointed and they've gone through the confirmation hearing, they already have a, that authority given to them by His Excellency, they are allowed to do that. And on the issue of the, the commissioning, it's going to happen very soon, as soon as possible time. Commissioning will happen. Um, so on the issue of 700 ghost names, I hope you were part of the, uh, or you did fully listen. She never said that there was uh, 700 ghost names. But what she did say clearly was that uh, the department realized that there were over 700 employees who were not, or 700 persons who were not covered under the civil service you know, process, they were not employees, they were not officially employed under the government, and that they were being paid from the supplementary budget, and they were being managed by someone from the Ministry of Finance, and that particular period was, was managed by someone from the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of State at the time. Um, so it is not that there is 700 ghosts, but these are actual people who are within the system of the Ministry of State. And to, to give you a brief update, by Monday, the uh, civil service agency, along with the Ministry of State um, and the GEC, I'm sure they will be coming here to conduct personnel audit. Um, so they will be expected, people who are here will be expected to provide the information of their work, what, they, what work they're doing. I mean, how they employ the employment information and all of that, so that we're able to put system in place. Um, so that is, you know, the information as we will provide them. Um, on the question of whether or not the Minister of Defense was where to resign, I think um, at this point we need to get to a point where we're all able to receive and be the information that is given. I say this to mean that, I mean, in the press statement released by the executive mansion, well, no, the former defense minister did turn out in his resignation, and the president received the resignation letter and accepted it and even praised the defense minister at the time. And there's no time the president never and will not, and in fact, you listen to this statement, 
it was very clear when the president spoke to the nation, he said that he, it is a political question of his resignation or uh, his taking off of the job was not being considered, you know, when the women brought in a petition. So we'd like to inform you that at no point in time that the minister was blessed by the president. And one of the things that I keep telling all of us, especially those of us who are covering the mansion and even beyond, is that we will not be in the business of responding to gossips or hearsay or um, information posted on social media because one of some of the comments, and I will encourage journalists to be more um, research-based, to get information for yourself and not just rely on a social media post. Or, I mean, let's, let's get to a business of doing due diligence to topics so that you can be quoting somebody saying something on social media. And I've said this countless times. We're not being in the business of responding or all the time reacting to this individual accusing this or, or assuming this happened. But with the fact, we will provide you the fact. We will tell you, we will inform you of the workings of the presidency. And that is why we're going to, that is what we're going to do. That is what we sign up to do and we'll continue to do that. On the question of uh, how soon the new defense minister, um, but I mean, I hope, again, it, seems, it comes back to the due diligence. I'm sure you listened to the president's speech. In that particular speech, he did appoint an acting defense minister who is Madam Geraldine George of the Ministry of Defense. So she's acting minister. Um, on the question of a meeting with the AFL, the meeting with the AFL happened during the course of the discussion at a time when they in fact, it was the very same day that the uh, then Minister of Defense tendered in his resignation. So that the photograph you saw online was the meeting of that day. There hasn't been a new meeting held with the AFL. As the, as the president has said during his message was that the committee, a team had been set up to be able to investigate the situation that's happened. Until that committee reports back, the security team is working along with the, the team to ensure that all of that is clear. Um, on the issue of 500, EPS will be reduced by 500. Well, I mean, right now, as I've mentioned, the issue of the bloating of the civil service or, or people who are within different line ministries and agencies is not even only with the Ministry of State. It cut across many ministries and agencies of government. But one of the issues the, the team from the EPS have consistently also said is the overcrowdedness of the EPS with people who may not necessarily have that qualification or the training. So one of the proposals is that they're going to do, again, an assessment of the entire EPS code. Because you know the EPS is an executive protection service. You should be trained and up to the standard and up to the task to be able to you know, fill that role. So yes, the EPS is also reviewing their personnel portfolio, and they will be updating us, will be updating on the next course of action. But there's just, there, there are different things that have happened and different things will happen over the course of the time, such as the training, more training for EPS, as I said last week. Um, and, and you will see some semblance of professionalism in all of our security apparatus, especially so with the EPS. Um, on the issue of the rehabilitation center, um, uh, the, the, what the Ministry of Health, along with the committee, will begin on Monday is an assessment to know where the institution that say they're doing rehabilitation programs are. So for example, if you say you do a program around rehabilitation, so once you map out across the country, once you map out um, where, who are the people, you know, supporting or doing these kinds of interventions, it will be good now you have that, then you have, you will do also another assessment to know where the ghettos are. You know, how are substances coming into this country? Where are the poorest borders? How do we collaborate with our partners to ensure that there's a holistic program? So the, the assessment for the rehabilitation center is just one of many other different activities that the committee is going to do. Um, on the issue of the president visit, I mean, I've said this, yes, we did release a press statement is hoping you both, all of you can go through the press statement and, and, and see. Uh, again, like I said, we will not be responding to hearsay and they say and social media say. 
Um, yes, the president did write the um, Senate, informing the Senate of his visit. In fact, we should all be happy because the president said, I won't do that, they want this. So at least, you know, but the fact is the president went for a short visit that was not an official or state visit. It was a working visit, and he went to Ghana, and he's back in his country, and he's doing the people's business. Um, on the issue of meeting the vice president of Ghana versus the president, you know, if you work in this space, as I was talking to some journalists the other day, you know, this is a fast-paced environment. You will have a meeting, upon meeting, you'll meet this other person, you'll meet the other person, and of course, the president did have a meeting with the vice president of Ghana and other dignitaries, again, the meeting or the engagement or the president's travel wasn't an official state visit. It wasn't a national visit. It was a one-day working visit. So I think we should keep it at that. And the president is working. This year, he's back doing his business for the library. So we'll take another round of questions, the final round, and then Call it a day. Yes. Right. Where is yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my name is Ahmed Wozi, and I work for the DDS Zero. I'd like you to uh, elaborate on the uh, question here, on the issue. Are there plans to accommodate those who are not on civil service but have been taking on the issue of state here? Second, we keep getting more news about you know, uh, government officials declaring their assets. Is the president concerned about that and what is he doing? Can you speak to that? Yeah, so there's not much news about you know government officials declaring their assets. Is the president concerned about that and what is he doing? Questions? Yeah. I'll continue. Okay, um, my name is Vasta Talu of uh, your BC Radio of the Liberia Broadcasting System. I want to know, like yesterday, the president met with uh, the heads of foreign missions, and one of the things they talked about was um, the issue of salary, allowance, and rent, and everything. So how soon is the president going to address that question? Um, thank you. My name is Mekong Kiai again. Um, in 1975, the Labrain legislature passed a law that each country should have one ministerial position. And Councillor Tiawon Gonglo raised this issue. Has this reached the ears of the president? And if so, what's the concern like? This is the executive mansion, regular press. Thank you very much, Madam Press Secretary. My name is Joseph Daniels, and I report for OKFM. I would like for you to please clarify as to uh, what means the president travel. Uh, based on his recent travel to Ghana. And also the 2016 local law states that uh, the chief executive officer and the president of the company is responsible to appoint the two vice presidents. But that, that was done by President Boakai. Can you please clarify as to on what authority the president appointed those two vice presidents. Thank you. Questions will continue. How are you, madam? I'm Romeo from Cloud TV and I have two major concerns. Uh, the first concern is the president visit to Ghana. What was the urgency attached to the visit that the president left in the way in which he left? And secondly, why are we not getting an insight of the discussion that was here in Ghana? Two, concerning the budget that the president wrote the house about the past, there are an institution that are highlighted within the budget that the president asked to be audited. And within the budget plan that he's trying to put out uh, within that and bring some calling and pulling out over oh, operating in the old budget or that's the new budget that was standing. And if you're watching, keep on watching. Be locked down to 
My name is Anthony Jefferson, the name from ABC Radio. Second. Sorry, sorry, Anthony. Do we have any other person who had a question so we can give everybody an opportunity? So one person can be asking. Okay, I don't see any hands in it. Okay, yeah. so you got Yes. So at the graduation ceremony of the United Methodist University in Langibi, there was an incident. That incident was reported that those officers on ground or on duty were reassigned. Uh, up to today's date, we've not gotten any update about uh, the investigation or initiated by your office or the EPS. When I say your office, the president's office. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Madam Kula Fofana, receiving yeah. questions from the media. Yeah, thank you again, Julius Cotton. There are uh, increasing concerns relative to electricity. Uh, is the president also concerned about that particular issue? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for all those uh, concerns um, and comments. On the issue of electricity, trust me, all of us concerned because it's not been, you know, we're in the dry season. Uh, the president, as well, is very concerned about that. In fact, um, uh, he has had engagement and continues to, you know, speak with the authorities in the sector, people who are in those sectors to get some updates on where we are with the aspect of electricity, what, what the challenges, what's going on, because we all know that it's important, especially so the current situation of the dry season is very hot, and we've not even gotten into the, you know, the main dry season just yet. Um, so yes, he's concerned and, and the steps taken towards that. On the issue of UMU you know, security. To say that you have not had updates, I, I think it would be unfair to us because every at every press conference with questions around that have been asked and gave you updates. And you know the thing with security investigation and especially investigations around the subject, around the president, you know, it takes some time. And it's it's a detailed investigation that is ongoing and it's still ongoing. Because it's not just about the individual or that particular incident. There's a whole perimeter of everything else that happened. So that investigation is still ongoing. And those people, have, as, as I told you the last time, is that they're still you know, on reassignment. And in fact, when you, there was a question around the number of personnel within the EPS, those are some of the issues that have come out during the course of those so you will hear, you know, a number of different issues that come out, but the investigation is an ongoing and a very active investigation happening. Um, on the issue of the institutions who uh, the president has requested GSC to audit, and why is it that they have resources, you know, for the uh, part portion that the president has asked? Even if they've asked you about audit, it doesn't mean your whole operation should stop. You know, even if you say. Let's audit, for example, like we're having personnel audit supposed to happen at, uh, I mean, at the Ministry of State. But people are still coming to work. People have to come to work. People have to show up, you know, to ensure that the, the part of the bargain is fulfilled. So it's in that context. So even if the president has to audit this institution, it doesn't mean that you have to shut down all the operations. You have to not do your work. People don't have to show up to the job and just sit back and wait until they, you know, any, anybody else suggests that. It won't, it won't be the best suggestion. Again, I don't know how you all want me or what you all want me to say about the Ghanaian travel. Um, I've said this countless of times. And you know, one of the things that I, I really will encourage our journalists to do, because like, like I said, you all help to set the narrative. And it's important for us to be able to shift the conversation on the important matters that the Liberian people want to hear. And some of the questions that you're asking, like electricity, like food, rice, and all these different things, those are paramount things that the Liberian people care about. And it's important that you help to shape the conversation. The president did travel to Ghana for a one-day working visit. He has gone, he has come back, he continued to do the work of the Liberian people. So how what would it be important for you to ask those critical questions that the Liberian people care about? The Liberian people care about how to ensure that the issue of rice prices reduced, and there are plans happening on that. The library people want to know about the 100 day deliverable on the low cost stuff in the mud theory. So, from theory to practice, 
How do you ask those critical questions around those things? And this is something I'm really hoping that over the course of the time, and this is not for us uh, telling you what to do or what not to do or censoring the media or selecting specific topics, but at the end of the day, besides me being a journalist, besides me being in the position that I'm in, we're all Liberians. We all go back to our homes and families. So the important thing is about you all being able to help us inform the public on the key subject. All of the journalists, the newspapers, people who write, and instead of being speculative and listening to gossip here, saying this one, shift the conversation to the important matter and hold the government accountable for the promises that we make. And for that, I will really be helpful. I mean, it will be helpful for the librarian people. And that's one of the things we will do, we will continue to do, especially for all of you who are in this uh, press board. Um, on the question of um, uh, by what means the president traveled. Of course, the president did not walk from here to go to Ghana. <laughs> he flew to Ghana. So, uh, I mean, again, this Ghanaian thing, he went on a visit, on a working visit. In I don't know how you say it. If I will speak it in Ba or, or Ghana, but uh, <coughs> President Tawa Ghana Ajay. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, that's just besides the, the, the issue. Um, and then somebody talked about the issue of the um, 1975 law. I've not seen it. Uh, it's something that I would appreciate you sharing with me um, about each county having um, one ministerial post. And some of our laws, over time, they've been amended. And there are new laws. Some laws have been repealed. So I've not seen this. So please, please share with us. Um, and in terms of, I think the bigger question here, I don't think it's only about the law, but the bigger question about um, the appointment of officials that are representing the, the different you know, counties. And I think as the appointment continues, the president is really uh, concerned about ensuring that Liberians across the aisle, in every you know part of our country, you know, work around being part of the government. And he, he takes that very seriously. On the issue uh, my sister raised about the foreign mission, and you know, the situation of our foreign mission is really challenging. Um, some of you who have traveled to our foreign mission, sometimes they put, us, they put a whole country out for rain business. You know, there was a recent situation with Belgium um, and the lots of other situations with staffing, with the you know, services, with personnel, with materials for them to operate. And it's something when the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, along with the heads of mission met, his excellency, those are concerns that they put forward. And he have also committed, and besides, besides that, you know, Liberia is also a part of the global community and part of these uh, regional organizations. It will interest you to know that Liberia owes regional organizations too much money. Every country is supposed to contribute, for example, to ECOWAS, to the AU, to all these different international organizations. And we all, it is not a good thing for our country. So this is something that the president is concerned about, all of those issues. And as you know, generally in our sectors, everywhere got problems. And the president is committed to solving those problems a day at a time and you know, systematically. It's not going to happen overnight, but he's definitely concerned. He's looking for ways in which bilaterally those institutions can function because they're representing the country, they're flying the country's flag really high. Um, on the issue of access declaration for uh, officials of government, this is something that he takes very seriously. As you all know, the president uh, declared his assets, and he will be showing that his ministers, you know, and it, it's just the right thing to do. So the ministers who have already gone through the confirmation hearing, and you've been confirmed, it's good that you declare your assets. It, it, it won't look good that a bosman will call you and say, oh, why you declare your assets? You know, so it's a, it's a good thing that it's important that ministers, um, deputy ministers, people who've been appointed in government to declare their assets. Um, personal payroll for the Ministry of State. Um, I think it was in the context of, who asked the question about personal payroll? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, concern about as to whether they will stay be accommodated. Oh yes, so whether they will stay be accommodated. Again, what's, going on, what's happening is a joint um, assessment going on with doing a full situation. So one of the things that this government is really keen about, I mean, the interest is not to fire everybody. 
But the interest is when you when you're hiring, hire through the proper channel. Hire through a merit-based system. So if you say you're working, you 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 have a credibility or your credentials in this area, you should be able to and then it should be where the institution needs your expertise. And then you can be duly hired and serve your country. And where needed, where necessary, CSA will, will go through. Because some of us, from before we enter the government, we have to sit the civil service test. A lot of people who are employed, they went through the civil service, the CSA. We have to be able to ensure that people who are coming to serve, to go through these processes. So the team, once that assessment is done, that personal audit is done, there will be a recommendation. And at, the time, at that time, when the recommendation is given, by the team who will be able to inform you. That's why we're even continuing this, you know, regular update. So as new actions, new policies, new activities, new events happen, we are able to inform you. Um, so I think that was the final question, and I want to thank all of you for, for, for please. I want to thank all of you for this opportunity. Uh, again, please. We, we try as much as possible to do two rounds of questions. If you see, you've got to write them down, you do your first batch. Make sure you bring in all your good <laughs> questions. The second opportunity, send it to me. Let's, let's, let's keep it going. And besides, if you still have really questions, we can talk about it. I can answer your questions. But we want to close this you know, press conference here um, and continue next week. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful weekend. I'd like to for She's the President Secretary of His Excellency in Liberia. Ambassador President Joseph Yuma Wakai. And my name is Emmanuel Kipat. I'm right here with you on the Executive Mansion platform. We'd like to say thanks a million for viewing. And until next time, keep us right on top of it. Once again, I'm Emmanuel Kipart, and do have a pleasant day. Thank you.